well, let's just say I'm an agent I have bandwidth for really, you know, listen, man, I have a whole lot of different fears of cameras and I don't really know what to do and this is overwhelming. What's the platform and what's the piece of content that's a go-to for you? Well, I'm on six different platforms, right. which is a ton of work. Right. Um, I'm on um, Instagram and Facebook. I, those are my main ones. I'm on LinkedIn, which I think is really great for me to connecting with like the professional network. I'm on Twitter for real time information, statistics, um, and uh, I'm on uh, TikTok and YouTube, which is all video marketing. Um, and you're great on YouTube. I love your YouTubes. Oh my! <laughs> um, but they take they take a lot of time to do videos like that. Like it's just it's not an easy production. Um, TikTok's a little bit more easy. I probably look like an idiot. I'm doing a lot of the like lip sticking yeah, things. Yeah, I've been asking. But to they, those do viral. I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad at it, but I'm getting thousands of views. Um, so I, you know, the most important, I think out of all those mediums is, is Instagram. It's just, it's the largest and it's like where, where my target market is. Hello everyone. And welcome back to leaders of lifestyle podcast. I'm your host, Michael Ferraro. And on today's episode, we have a very, very special guest. Ryan Garson from the Garson team in New York City. So just a little bit about Ryan. Ryan is a very influential real estate agent covering Manhattan and Brooklyn. Ryan Garson has contracted over 500 million in sales and brokered over 500 deals for clients in his past six years alone. Outstanding. He's a seasoned entrepreneur and a successful day-to-day -day deal maker. Ryan has known the industry and his creative out-of-the-box approach to marketing, combining the latest technologies with, with marketed cutting-edge strategies to connect sellers with the right buyers with remarkable efficiency and results. Ryan is also the co-founder and CEO of Very Social, a dynamic social media agency specializing in building and amplifying the brands of real estate professionals nationwide, and also the author of a new book, which we'll be talking about today. Ryan, thank you so much for being on with us. Thanks for having me. That was a heck of a bio. There was a lot to get out there, <laughs> but um, I'm so happy to have you on because I really want to unpack a lot about technology, social media, you being a young uh, real estate broker with such early success in real estate. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not that young. No. Lesson. We'll, we'll say, uh, just take it. And I just turned 40 on, I turned 40 on Saturday, so I feel kind of Listen, old I'm, now. I'm 37, and I'm like right there. So we're going to say we're really, <laughs> really young, okay? Because, I mean, you, we, uh -huh. we, okay. we kind of are in it, right? We can do this for another 30, 40 years. You know, okay. With technology, we could be 300 years old. I mean, who knows? We don't know. Well, we're going to be selling, uh, you know, virtual uh, real estate. I got so. some really cool commercial space on Mars or Moon that we're planning and everything like that. <laughs> but I'm pumped to have you on, man, because there's a lot to unpack and you're kind of part of this next generation of real estate that's pushing social media and technology forward. And uh, there's a lot to go over with you. But uh, I asked this question of everybody that we've had on, just kind of, it's a, a softball just to kind of talk a little bit about it, but the real estate market, New York city, your market, we've had a lot of, uh, people come on, talk about the real estate market. I'm hearing trends that it's slowing down. Then you hear from other people that it's, it's just hotter than ever. How are you finding the New York city real estate market ending 2021 and going into 2022? Um, I mean, this year was record breaking. Um, it was so busy. Um, there was, like, especially the luxury market, I think there are more sales over $4 million than there ever has been in New York City. Um, I was talking to one of my sales managers and he said 75% of his agents had the best year ever. So, you know, I think um, 2020 was a little bit slower, just like really kind of like the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, like, even we couldn't show for like three months. And I think that was like a little bit of an off year. And there was just a lot of like built up um, or pent up demand and uh, people were just on the sidelines and everyone kind of came back at once. And also, I mean, 2020 was like the year of everybody leaving New York City, like markets like yours and the Hamptons and South Florida just got rushed right. with, with all New York, uh, New York City uh, residents. Um, but I feel like this year we saw a lot of them coming back. You know, they missed the city. It was just too quiet. Like they, you know, the city, it's the capital of the world, New York City. And there's just like an energy and um, a pace that, that 
there's nothing like it. So we had a lot of people that were coming back. Um, I do feel like there could be a lot like snowbirds and second homes is kind of uh, like, uh, it's always been a trend, but I think that's something that we're really starting to see just because I think value people value real estate so much right now. Um, but yeah, it was a, a very busy year, very active. Like what I'm going, what I, what I see in 2022 is that almost kind of like how it is around the country. And it wasn't like this at all, but I'm really see, starting to see uh, uh, inventory shortage. So I, I'm working with a ton of buyers right now. And they're just like, when's new inventory coming on? Like, it, it's just getting, it's really getting tightened up. Um, so, you know, I think, I think we're kind of like catching up to the rest of the country. Usually we're ahead of the game. Um, but I feel like we've been actually a, a, a lagging, um, uh, we've been lagging compared to like all these other, uh, cities around the world, around the U S. Yeah. It's crazy that, um, like it doesn't matter what market you go to. It's always the same. People are having the same exact impacts. And I kind of feel like that, that that's, that's, that's a healthy real estate market when everybody's kind of feeling the same thing. You know, it's not, you know, specifically different places. A lot of what's happening nationally will also, you know, be a positive to the local, which, you know, we're all kind of feeling the same kind of things. Um, there is uh, an embracing um, that you have, and you obviously took it to another level, of social media and of um, technology and branding. Um, Compass that we're both part of does a lot of great, great things in the technology space. That's really what they're known for. You are bringing a social media component and embracing it where a lot of other brokers either don't want to, haven't really thought it was necessary, or just are starting to just now learn about it. Talk to me about um, the idea of social media in a real estate agent's career and how important that is and, uh, and why they need it. Well, I think it's the number one tool to brand yourself. Um, you know, you're, there's over 2 billion people on Instagram. Um, of those 2 billion people, there are over 500 million people over the age of 25. Those are all potential homeowners and potential clients. So like your target market is living on Instagram. Like all your followers are your sphere of influence. They're your friends, your family, your past clients. Um, you know, I'm not somebody who's gonna like pick up a phone call and like just like call somebody that sold a house two, three years ago. Um, but I would be feel more comfortable like sending them a DM or like following them on social media and seeing like what's going on in their life. Like that's a great way what, what, what social does it. It allows you to connect with um, your, your friends and family like through their social media. So, um, you know, my mindset is always to really be consistent and be authentic and um, create content that that really represents me and that's like engaging, that's entertaining, that's informative um, because people are going on your social media before they are going on the Compass website. If you actually Googled your name, like your social media um, platforms are going to come before the Compass website. So it's like people want to know who they're working with. Like when you go to a restaurant, they usually check out the web restaurant like on their Instagram before their website. Like so. Um, I feel like it's just a great medium to really start like with brand building and then you could start using it into like, you know, email marketing or videos for listings um, or whatever, you know, postcards. Like I feel like Instagram marketing is the number one tool to really like build a brand. And then once you start to get good at it and create content and you start to build an influence. And like, I go into a listing pitch and like, I reach like a hundred thousand people a month through, through, through my social media platforms. So, you know, I have reach, like when I post, put a listing out there, you know, uh, it's, it's reaching a large amount of people that my competitors don't have right now. And so it's a real competitive advantage. And I think it's like the brokers, the agents that are, you know, putting the time and effort and energy into like really creating content and promoting themselves on social media um, they're going to be, you know, eating more of the market share and those OG, what, uh, brokers, what Gary V said, you know, they're going to be losing market share to the up and coming agents. Like you, I think what you just said in the very beginning, like there's a new generation of agents and like, 
you know, there's traditional marketing and then there's really new marketing. And I think like the new marketing of like digital market content creation and social media marketing is the future for how to sell real estate. So this is not new, right? People have been told about this for the last 10 years, especially in the real estate world, but there's definitely been shifts to where it started where, well, you know what you should do? You should do a Facebook ad. Like, like people were just trying to learn how to like do a Facebook ad post. And then as algorithms change, the social media platforms change, I feel like there's people who, who are not full believers in it that don't grasp it. And because they don't grasp it, they don't realize how fast trends switch and how things have to be stayed upon. Right now, if you had to tell everybody, what, what's your number one go-to social media? Like I, I have bandwidth, well, let's just say I'm an agent. I have bandwidth for really, you know, listen, man, I have a whole lot of different fears of cameras and I don't really know what to do and this is overwhelming. What's the platform and what's the piece of content that's a go-to for you? Well, I'm on six different platforms, right. which is a ton of work. Right. Um, I'm on um, Instagram and Facebook. I, those are my main ones. I'm on LinkedIn, which I think is really great for me to connecting with like the professional network. I'm on Twitter for real-time information, statistics. Um, and uh, I'm on uh, TikTok and YouTube, which is all video marketing. Um, and you're great on YouTube. I love your YouTubes. Oh my. <laughs> um, but they take, they take a lot of time to do videos like that. Like it's just, it's not an easy production. Um, TikTok's a little bit more easy. I probably look like an idiot. I'm doing a lot of the like lip sticking yeah, things. Yeah, I've been asking but to try they, to those do it. Yeah. I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad at it, but I'm getting thousands of views. Um, so I, you know, the most important, I think, out of all those mediums is, is Instagram. It's just, it's the largest. And it's like where where my target market is. Like that's where I'm talking to my, right. to my friends and family. And I keep on saying that, like my sphere... Right. My followers, that's what they're called, is my target market. And so I'm communicating with them. I'm literally going, scrolling down and I'm commenting. I'm going through the stories and I'm shooting, I'm sending DMs. Like, I think if you expect to have a social media and get a bunch of likes and comments and not like and comment your followers, that that's not going to work. So like, it's like what you put into it is what you're going to get out. Like, yeah, you need to create good content and very social could definitely help you with that. And if you're a realtor, you probably have a really good personality. Um, you know, you have, you know, an interest, which is real estate, which is honestly the hottest topic there is right now. Uh, I mean, look how many real estate uh, reality shows there are that are like hits. You know, everyone's talking real estate. You walk into a dinner party and it's like not a taboo topic. It's something that like people approach you and they want to talk about. What, what's, how's the market? Like, what could I do with, like, what, what do you think my house is worth? Like, it's always... It's always a conversation. So like, that's why I feel like really making your Instagram is a, it, like your own reality show um, where you just like stay, you mind share with people, you stay top of mind. Um, I'm, and the, being consistently posting, I'm always um, like, I'm always a top of everyone's feed and top of everyone's story because I'm doing it every single day. Right. And people just associate with that. I always, I always thought of it where it shifts, right? But I always looked at the big three because LinkedIn is kind of the mold of all these, but I always looked at it like, YouTube was your library. That's where like you can always put your long form content and people can get the longer stuff that no one really has patience for, but that's your library. Instagram is your brand. That's your consistent brand building. And then your Facebook now has become basically like friends, family, and ads. It's been a ton of ads and stuff like that. But um, that's how I always looked at it. But you made a good point right there. I mean, Instagram really is the king now. It could change. It could change, but right now, it's definitely going to change. I mean, Facebook changed their name to Meta, so you know there's going to be a lot of changes on the horizon with social. Um, that's why you need to get in now because if you can't if you can't get a hold of like Instagram and TikTok, like once we start getting into this metaverse, you're going to be so lost. Right. Exactly. So let's let's jump in, man. I mean, this is such a valuable podcast for agents who are of these generations or any generation doesn't really matter. But it, it, I mean, you're getting, it's getting to the point where you're really, like, we've told you over and over again, it, you know, the top coaches have told you, everybody's told you like, this is, if you're not embracing this. So now we have professionals like yourself who are successful real estate brokers in the most competitive real estate uh, market in the, in the world, New York city. And now you, you're starting an entrepreneurial thing with like very social. And now, 
talk a little bit about why you started it and what it's all about. Yes. Yeah, so I started very social. It goes back four years ago when I, I started working with a social media manager. Um, I was working with this influencer. She was in the makeup and beauty space. And we really just collaborated on, on my social media. She would, you know, I'd send her pictures of, and, and ideas of like what I wanted, but it wasn't the most authentic. Like a lot of her posts were very like wordy. It just like, didn't really sound like me if you knew me. Um, but it did help me like get consistent with like posting because I think the one thing as realtors is like our days are so inconsistent. Like every single day is different. Um, so like actually like when you're posting, like you could put the posting to the back burner and you could just focus on like saving a deal. So I think that really helped me um, like working with her, but, and I worked with her for a year. Um, and then I ended up working with another social media manager that was an influencer as well, but she was also works for a new development agency, like doing social media. <laughs> so it was a really, it was a double whammy. And, um, and you know, with her, the Instagram stories really started to like kick in and she was just great at like telling the stories. And, um, with her, I started to sell real estate through social media and it was really through the Instagram stories. Cause it's just such a great way to like tell, like kind of like tell a story through different slides and then like engage with your followers, like, you know, sending DMS. Like I actually sold like a, a $3 million apartment when I was talking about like a first time, like what, like just really what, like, a first time buyer needs to do be, like to get going. And, you know, um, I sold a couple of apartments through just like, um, taking pictures of a, of a listing before it even went live, you know? So it's like the stories were just a really great kind of like reality show for me to like really connect. And I, I was selling millions of dollars on Instagram and it was saving me a ton of time. And honestly, I don't have the skill set. Like I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not the best copywriter. Um, I, I'm a good salesman. I know marketing and you know real estate. So I feel like those were my three qualities, but working with somebody who had that like technical skill of like design, copywriting, um, and just really got social media and also like just knew kind of like what to advise me to do. Um, I thought it was just like, I should start this a an agency for, for agents that's focused on social media. So um, Very Social was born two years ago. And, um, honestly, the first year was a real struggle. I started it in January of 2020 COVID hit in March and the brokerage I was with just didn't, didn't really want to get behind it. Like they did at the beginning and then they just never did. And, um, they said that I was competing with all the other agents and I'm like, I, I don't really see it that way because everybody's brand is different. Like I can't be you you know, on social media, um, even if we kind of like did the same sort of post, it would just be different coming from you rather than me. And, um, I'm like, I'm here to like help other agents. And then when I met Robert and compass and I told him my idea, I said, listen, I'm a package deal. I'll come over, but you know, I, I really want you to get behind very social. I want to be an approved vendor. I want to be an influencer within the company. Um, I want to speak, uh, about social media to the agents. And he's like, I love it. It's great. Um, let's do it. And so I, I came over a year ago and my business went from like, uh, this year I started the year with like 15 clients and now I have 80. Um, so, you know, I, and I have a, a 20 person staff, um, all virtual all over the country. I have clients all over the country. Um, and we've helped a lot of agents. Like I have some really great success stories where, you know, we're working with agents that have like tripled their GCI and they think that it's because of like, their consistency with like how we're posting for them and what were the messages that they're putting out there. And, you know, it's, it's like, I think one thing with agents and, and that's why they have trouble investing in, in their brand and social media is that they'd rather invest in Zillow leads and get something direct where like when you invest in your brand, it's like, you don't see those direct results right away, but you see them over time. Like brand building is so important. And it's like, you know, real estate agents are entrepreneurial, but like, I think when it comes to uh, like their finances, they kind of think more like deal to deal and they're not like looking at their overall GCI and say, all right, you know, I did, you know, uh, $500,000 GCI. I should put like 10% to marketing and then I should allocate a certain percentage to social media. Like I feel like, oh, I've done this for a couple of months and I haven't got any leads. You know, this isn't working for me. Like, uh, you know, I, I think people like this is like, 
agents like they've never really had to invest in like their brand like they are now like with social media. Yeah. You've had success in your your new business venture and you're also still selling real estate and obviously like, I'm you know there's so many reasons why it's been doing so well and it's so necessary. Um and then you just wrote a book. So talk a little bit about the book you just wrote. And we we I definitely want to hear about So that. I wrote a book it's called The Very Social Broker. Um, it pretty much, um, I put together my 10 core strategies of how I, um, go about my content creation, my digital marketing. Um, I really get into like my pillars of content and, you know, it's, it's a book that, that could be for a beginner's agent or for somebody who's been doing it a while. I think, I think it, it could give you a couple little tidbits of, uh, of what, I do that could like inspire you or motivate you or give you some ideas. Um, and it, it, it tells, it, t it just like go, goes about my strategy of how I go about my social media. And like, I really take social media very serious. Um, it's something that I think about like all the time. I'm always like coming up with ways on like just creating a content, creating content. And I, I feel like I, you really get inside my head of like how to think about things where you can like create content, like everyday stuff from like, you know, going to a soccer game with your family to traveling, to going to a restaurant, to, um, you know, connecting with local businesses in your community. Um, I have a uh, hundred content ideas too, which is pretty cool in the book. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you know, I think you kind of have to have a mindset, um, of, of like brand building on social media. And that's like kind of goes hand in hand with like content creation. And really it's like looking at your pillars of content, which are pretty much like what you stand for. And then like creating content off that. And I look at my pillars all the time. Like my pillars of content are real estate, social media, my family, New York city. I really try to be the mayor of, of, of my city. And I think that's one thing where people are like, I don't know what to post about, like post about where you live. You guys are selling your cities. Like, so like that's number one. Um, I, uh, do bagel reviews. Um, like I kind of leaned in on that and that kind of like went viral. I do fashion videos. Um, uh, I'm a New York Knicks, uh, season ticket holder. I do some Knicks stuff. Um, and I just like, I, t I collaborate with a lot of different businesses. Like this year alone, i have probably collaborated with almost like 150 different like influencers or businesses, like, um, like from the addition hotel, SBE entertainment, all the bagel shops that I've done, um, Rothman's clothing. Uh, and I think that's been a great way for me to get more exposure, get more followers. Um, and just really connecting. Like, I feel like podcasts are a great way to, to connect, um, with people. It's like the same thing with, with social media and like creating content. Like, you know, it's like the giver's gain. If you go into a, a bagel shop or a, a clothing store or somewhere where you just spend, spend time, like a salon and you know, like, Hey, I want to like do something to promote it. Like, like that goes away. That goes a long way. It goes a long way with like people who also the owner of that place, the people who go there, you know, it's like a mind share. It's like somewhat a way to connect with your followers. Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm a huge Knicks fans too. So we got to catch a game for sure. And I have a it's lot tough to be a Knicks game right now. Yeah, right now. I know. Four, they lost four in a row, I know. So, but I just, I did I see the, uh, Go to I went uh, when Curry broke the record. It was pretty. You were there. Historic moment. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, was awesome. that's sick. Nice. Um. So. So here's a question that I get uh, from agents all the time, and I think it, I think there's people. For, let let's let's forget the fact that there's a lot of agents who are shy on the camera and that sort of stuff. Let, let's forget that. Um, and let's forget the fact that probably there's a lot of top agents who feel like, well, I've kind of built my business like this. I don't think my clients want to see me on the camera. They don't want that kind of agent. They want the, they want the, uh, secret agent. You know what I mean? Um, let's forget all that. And let's just say for the general population, the 99% of regular agents out there who are going to listen or watch this or learn from this and they want to know from you, if a lot of agents say to me, do I document my content or do I create my content in the sense, in the essence of, 
Do I just say, hey, look, I'm here, click. Hey, look, I'm here, click. Hey, look, this is kind of cool, post this like that. Or do I create a show? Do I create a weekly episodic thing? Do I say, hey, I'm a market leader, so let me talk about the market. What do you think is better to do more of document or create? More, I say both, you know, more is better. Um, you really need to be consistent. Um, if you're posting once a week, like it, that, that could get lost, you know, but if you're posting every day, like you're going to be top of the feed. It's, uh, it, it just works with the algorithm where the more you post, like you're, you're going to be the top of the feed. You're going to be top on the Instagram stories. Um, and I think you do it both. Like some of it, you know, like has to be authentic, like just getting in front of a camera and just talking and just being you. And then other times, like, you know, if you do something a little bit more special, that's like curated, like working with a videographer, um, I think that's great too. There's also a difference, like, you know, the authentic stuff you could put on your stories, like they only last 24 hours. So it's like, if you do something stupid, it's gone. Like you don't have to worry about it. It's like the in feed, like those are there, they live there. And so you want to do something that's probably a little bit more, um, you know, professional, like, I feel like that your grid, your in feed, like that's like your website. So you want it to like you, everything that's going to be there is going to live there. You want it to look good. You want it to have a nice aesthetic to be on brand. Um, and then there's also, there's a lot of, um, for the shy agents out there that you just said, like, there's a lot of, uh, like video coaches out there that are helping you like get out there. And like, we're realtors, uh, like we know real estate, you know, like really lean on t topics that you feel comfortable talking about. Like, are you a numbers person? Are you into area interior design? Like, are you into like knowing every house in, the, in, uh, in your community? Like lean into things that you feel comfortable about and that you talk about with your clients and just like get your phone out and just start there. I feel like you need to start somewhere. Um, so the more content, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And then, so as the as the, the the tides are changing and now facebook i feel like there's a lot of people who just figured out facebook and now that's already gone it's on the meta and now they're like oh do i gotta know tiktok do i really gotta know tiktok yeah you probably should know tiktok let's say predict you know 10 years is too far so let's say within the next couple of years what's your predictions on marketing continuing in real estate and where do you see the trend start to go well, I, I can tell you for 2022, the trend is video. Um, I think even Instagram said it like they were more of like a visual, like picture, uh, social media uh, medium, and now they're video. Like I think TikTok kind of came a hold, and now Instagram's trying to compete with them. And even like YouTube, look at YouTube. I think video is where it's at. Um, so I would really invest in like a video coach or improv. I think is a really good way to like you know just think on your feet. Um, even what we're doing right now, like we're creating content, like on the podcast, like this is very natural and like, we could cut this up and, and, and reuse clips. You can, um, take some of the words that we're saying and put it on Twitter. You know, we can, uh, give some of the information that we're doing and put it on LinkedIn. Um, there's a lot that we can do with just like a podcast. That's like very, you know, I get how it can be kind of intimidating to be in a camera and be like, all right, ready, set, go. And then like, Hey, I'm Ryan Garson. Like that could be a little intimidating. Um, I think you just need to take baby steps and maybe like, you know, invest in like getting better at it. If you're not good at it, like, you know, I feel like this is not going anywhere and, and you're going to lose market share to an agent that's going to be young, hungry, is going to come in and say, Hey, listen, I'm going to produce a $5,000, uh, video and then I'm gonna like you know I'm gonna target that video to the buyer of your house and then I'm gonna run ads all over um, the internet and social media targeting that buyer like you know even if you're like that established like behind the scenes 007 broker that has that relationship you know this these are big assets and and if they you know marketing is a big part of how homes sell um, so I think a lot of established agents are going to lose listing to to hungry motivated agents that really get you know the new wave of marketing and um and i think it's the future i think that because a lot of a, a lot of buyers today are willing to relocate more than they ever have and there's a little bit more money that's kind of been flowing around than there ever has been 
I think that there's people who are willing to do changes of lifestyle that we've never had at a massive amount. So it's one of the first times where I've ever – and plus there's, there's stuff pending – in markets, whether it's New York City, the Hamptons, Greenwich, Florida, there's stuff that's pending that's breaking records. So the, the property values are still sort of rising. So this is one of the first times where the old school agent that says, listen, work with me. Been here for 30, 40 years, been doing it, sold everything in these towns. And at the end of the day, we're going to do the same thing we've always done, and it comes down to price. Well, this is the first time where when you're working maybe with a generation or an agent or anyone really – that does understand what you're talking about. It's, it, it is a different proven method that actually can maximize getting you more money than just using price. Good marketing, good pictures, good video, and price. That, that's the most important thing. Well, wait a minute. What about, what about you? I feel like you do some of the best listing videos there are, at least on YouTube. I, I think they're amazing. They're entertaining. Like You have amazing houses. Like How do the sellers feel about that? And like you're, You seem pretty young, too. Like, how are you getting these listings over, you know, people that have been doing this for, you know, decades more than you? Uh, I think in the beginning for me, it was, you know, this is pre-COVID, right? For me in the beginning, it was just granimalistic phone calling and stuff like that until you basically, you, I had an ability to say, look, look, this is what I am able to do to actually produce content. These are where the actual buyers are that are coming in. Well, how do you know that? Well, I basically re-engineer that. I basically go through old tax records and find out where people have bought and where they came from. I can figure out if there's a trend there. Then I actually know how to then use social media to take my content that I'm actually doing and then hyper-target to them. And then if you understand about pixels and understand about where things come from and how to redirect traffic online, sometimes what happens is when you talk like that to, say, a seller that is – a little bit more traditional and older, they go, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I don't understand. Are you going to do an open house? And I'm like, well, yeah, I will do an open house, but you understand it's like, this is so much more valuable. Um, so I got to the point now where the content we shoot is so great and it's actually been the direct influence as to why we've sold houses for a certain amount of money and why it's pushed sales to happen. People like, all right, great. You have obviously a philosophy. You have something that works, so we're going to work with you. And then we heard about this from this person, and then the referrals start coming. But um, you're talking about a strategy of selling real estate that 20 years ago did not exist. 10 years ago was kind of being understood. But then the last five years is really like if you're not understanding this, you're lost. And now if you don't do this, then you are ancient. And the companies like Compass – that are embracing that with technology and guys like you that are doing the social media components to build your brand and then your product, which is your lifestyle product, which is your client's property. Understanding how all of these things work in this universe to create the very best opportunity for someone to sell a property for more money than they could get any other way is literally the difference between what we now believe is the best, best agents or not. And I think that, you know, it's the same thing as you, man. But it, it, it does have its ups and downs. I mean, you, listen, we talked to, we kind of joked about before about you being a young agent, right? And you feel like, oh, I'm not that young. But and your ideals of kind of what you're doing and how you're building your business and your brand are still new. They're still infantile in the world of how this is done. I mean, hell, there's still guys who still want the face on the park bench. They, they, still, they still want it on, the, you know, I got to have my sign, my, my sign with my face on my sign. Like they still believe that they're able to reach more people through a piece of paper than they are with social media spreading. Um, still beliefs out there. And there's still sellers who also still believe, well, are you going to put my house in the New York Times? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, you can put your house in the New York Times, but, but I don't know if that's going to sell the house. That's not what we're necessarily talking about. So um, for sure, man, um, it's, for me, it's definitely a, a difference. I wanted to ask you a question before we, before we sign off. You weren't always in real estate. And in your 20s, you were, in re, you, you were a pretty successful retail entrepreneur, right? I believe, in Florida? Well, when I was in college, I started a promotion company. Pretty much, I ran all the clubs and bars in Tampa uh, by the time when I was 20 years old. It was pretty crazy. Um, and I sold that business, and then I started a high-end puppy boutique called Palm Beach Puppies. And I franchised it and opened up 15 stores. So I sold that when I was 30. So in my 20s, I had um, two successful businesses that that I created and sold. And then I had like a couple of years. Of, I moved to New York when I was 30. And I had two years of really just figuring out what I wanted to do before I got into real estate. 
And so now for the last eight years, I've been, you know, a real estate broker in New York City. And in the last two years, I've been doing uh, Very Social, which has been, um, which has been awesome, which, you know, helping a lot of agents. And, and now it's like Very Social. I really started off as a, um, as really more of like a, just an Instagram and Facebook management and content creation agency. And now it's a full service agency. We're doing LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube. Um, we're doing email marketing. We're doing paid ads. Um, so we're really like a full service uh, social media agency. And I think right now we're probably working with like almost 50 Compass agents. So this is in your blood. I mean, like you, you have the entrepreneurial spirit. Like this is just something. Were you always like that as a kid too? Like you just were like, I got to open up. A yeah, pretty, pretty much. Cool. I've always just been an entrepreneur for sure. All right. But I think all realtors are entrepreneurs. You know, I think they just need to. They need to think that they're, they, they really need to, to like run their business like a business and not like be like an agent and, and just do by deal by deal. Like they really need to like have a plan, look at their numbers, look at their numbers like from year to year, you know, have a marketing plan, um, allocate funds to it. You know, like don't run your business from like, you know, buyer to buyer to listing to listing. Like you really need to look at it like from afar um, because I think when I, once you start running your business, like a business, like it starts to really like, you know, flow, like there's systems in place and, um, it's just a better, uh, user experience for your clients. Absolutely. Absolutely. So going forward, Ryan Garson, you have a successful real estate business that you've created. You have this very successful and growing, uh, social media company, branding company, a full service boutique. You have this book that you put out. Where can people get the book? Um, it's on all the websites, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon. Um, I can send out a link to you. Yeah, so please. You so we can out. put it in the description and people can take a look at it. I, 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 I'm telling people they should read it. I'd like to read it. Um, yeah, you can just do it. The very social broker. It's like on all the web on all the, uh, bookstores. Okay. And the website for your, your company. Uh, very social nyc.com. My Instagram handle is Ryan G stealth NYC. Uh, we also have a great, um, uh, very social has a great Instagram handle, uh, very social, uh, NYC. Um, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, just a quick question. I also have the Garson team at on Instagram at Garson team too. So it's like, I'm managing three social media Instagrams and they're all really on point. Uh, and it's really, it's also. I think important to see like how I run my personal to compare to my team page, you know, like they're, they really have a different like look, feel and information that goes out, but both are pretty awesome and they work, they work. Uh, there's a ton of synergy between the two pages. Beautiful, beautiful. And then, um, going forward, if somebody did want to be in your program and work f and work with very social, how, what, what do they have to do to be able to they go to the website, learn about it, and then there's a consultation call? Yeah, just go to the website. I have a lot of information on like what we do there. You can reach out to me. We have a presentation that we go over. Um, I think like also the big thing with Very Social is that that we like advise them like on like what's the trending. Like we look at their statistics. We see like, you know, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. We, we base a lot of our content creation on the month, on the season um what's trending so besides like actually doing all the posting for them and like writing the copy and doing the hashtags we grow their followers um you know we really just we help kind of build their brand for them like really work off their pillars of content um hold them accountable so it's been it's been uh it's been a great run with this very social and i think it's just gonna get bigger and better. So do you, where do you see yourself between the, the lane of, uh, you know, successful real estate broker to the lane of very social and author and kind of all these side endeavors? Do you see yourself trying to keep these two roads going, uh, as long as you can, or do you see yourself kind of breaking out one and kind of flowing with the other one? I think they're, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, you know, I, I, I love real estate. I have a team that I've, I've grown. It's a 10 person team. Um, so I kind of run, I run, really run my real estate business, like, like a business. I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO. I have an operations, uh, I have a, I'm the CEO and then there's operations, there's sales, there's marketing, and then there's the agents below. So I, um, I really run that like a business. Um, 
And then, you know, the agency, I love the, I love, I love marketing. I love talking about social media. I love being creative um, and like helping, you know, I, I love getting on the phone and just like, look, I can look at somebody's Instagram and give them advice, like right off the bat. Like I, I can just, I, I'm constantly uh, like looking at what all the top people in social media are doing from like real estate to finance to celebrities. And I kind of like will come up with ideas on like how it could work for like me and my clients. Gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, um, I, y this is a tricky podcast because I, there's so much that I want to go into and ask, but I don't want to give too much away on this because I think at the end of the day, there's so much value in what you do that please people out there, if you're selling a billion dollars a year in real estate, or you're selling, you're trying to get your first million dollar sale in real estate, reach out to Ryan uh, if you need help in that. Uh, he'll answer your questions. And Compass Brokers, please make sure you're checking out Very Social. Check out his, his, his book. Uh, go to his websites. Follow him. Watch what he does. Listen to this podcast. Listen to what he's saying, but watch what he's doing because he's actually telling you that there is an actual process to this. So watch him because I follow his stuff. Yeah, I follow me on IG and you'll really see that, like how how I'm like telling my story every single day. And I, one thing also is just like, I'm the expert. Uh, you know, I really, I, just even the, I'm, the repost I do, you know, the, of Gary V, of Tom Ferry, of like this guy in New York, Nico, he's like a, a real New Yorker. Like, I, I like to call it social currency. You know, I'm like, I'm reposting things that like, I want my audience to see that like, so they know that I know. And, and maybe they find it interesting or they didn't know. Right. If people want more, because I'm going to talk to you off air and I'm, I'm going to get all the goodies. So you people out there listening or watching, make sure that you reach out and, uh, and get this information. Ryan, is there anything else that we left off that you want to kind of talk about? Um, listen, I think the best way to really to like um, if you want to start to get your social media going, you want inspiration, you want ideas like follow me and see what I'm doing. Follow the other top brokers, Ryan Serhan, Josh Altman. Aaron Kirkman, um, uh, Kirsten from Million Dollar Listing. Like there's so many good people out there that are like really putting time and effort to, and you'll see all the celebrity brokers that are out there from all the real, reality shows, like they're active on social media. Right. So why shouldn't you? Right. Google me. You can see what I'm doing on all the platforms I'm on from YouTube to LinkedIn to TikTok. Um, and they all are different. I'm not posting the same stuff on each medium. And it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's like a full time. Like, like you don't have to do that. I think you need to, you know, find like what medium works for you and really lean into it. And then like, maybe like slowly get into something else. But, um, if you're not doing it, your, your competitors are going to be eating your lunch. Yeah. So make the most amount of money for you. Make the most amount of money for your family. Do with the best for your clients. If you don't understand this stuff, watch, reach out, get help, educate yourself. And, uh, and Ryan, thank you again, you know, so much for being on. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're under the weather. Get well soon, my friends, and keep kicking butt. Yes. All right. Thanks for having me, Michael. You got it. And everybody, Leaders of Lifestyle Podcast, I'm Mike Ferraro. Take care.